chased out by number 15, Chase Milovich. Illegal block, blow the waist. Offense number 76, 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. They don't need you to be in third down and 15 to be really good on third down defensively. They are good in almost any third down and distance. But third and 15, you'd think this defense would be almost invincible. Let's see what Peyton Ramsey can dial up. Well, he gets Michigan to jump. Is it a false start, though? It is offsides against Michigan. Offside. Defense number three. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Yeah, you could have called it against really any of Don Brown's defense alignment there. Winovich, that's smart. It's a heads up play. First third down of the game. That is certainly coached against Don Brown and his group. You know they're going to come after it. You know Rashawn Gary is hungry for those sacks and negative plays. Use your cadence against them. Four man front on third down now in 10. And Devin Bush shows blitz. Now he'll back out. Only a four man rush. Ramsey with time. Now he'll extend the play. And he'll simply hurl it to the sideline. Well covered downfield by Michigan, and it'll be a punt to start the game for Indiana. Yeah, they're just so well coached. We saw them a few weeks ago against Cincinnati, and, and for Ramsey there, you like the protection early, but you get into those down a distance, and why it's impossible, they play that zone defense, and with the level of speed they have at the corners, at the linebackers, those eyes are back into the backfield. There is just simply nowhere to go with the ball. Aiden Whitehead. The latest Australian punter to hit college football. He'll be kicking it deep to Donovan Peoples-Jones. For Hayden Whitehead, the first time he had ever played in an American football game was against Ohio State in our opener on Thursday night. Peoples-Jones heading south instead of north, and he gets bottled up. Flag down late. So let's see this penalty call and how this will affect field position. Things stand now, Michigan to start at their own 29. There's no foul on the play for a block in the back. The block in question was from the side. First and 10, Michigan. Play action to start. Pitch and catch for eight yards out to the edge to the tight end, Zach Gentry. That is a good rhythm and timing throw. Expect a lot of two back today. And expect it because that two back is going to limit what Indiana likes to do defensively. It gets them out of their nickel group. It puts their base personnel on the field. It shifts their linebackers around. And Michigan feels like it simplifies what they like to do on that side of the ball. And Brock, passing game coordinator Pep Hamilton told me before the game it's so important to get out to a good start to eliminate any self-doubt early and just let these guys play loose and fast. Well, they've got a offensive play caller's dream yardage, second down and one. Ron Higdon met, but he's got the first down, a gain of a couple. And Brock, 
building off of what Allison just talked about in her pregame report that John O'Corn didn't talk to the media this week. You thought that that was a little bit of a red flag, some tension coming out of Ann Arbor? I'm torn on that one. I love the hyper-focused tunnel vision. It, it marries perfectly with the head coach, but the other side of me says that you're paying attention to the noise. You know, business as usual, if you flush it, you should be able to talk about it and move on. I'm rather torn. Most importantly, we'll see his rhythm. We'll see his confidence in this first quarter. That's most important. Play action again. Looking downfield for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Just misses. Oh, that's a walk-in touchdown if Peoples-Jones can catch it in stride. He had Chase Dutra beat. Yeah, this is a eight-man protection. This is a two-man route. This is the matchup you want. You'll hear this, I think, with every analyst that does a Jim Harbaugh, Pep Hamilton game. Pro style, create your matchups. And that is your fastest, most explosive player by a long ways, four yards ahead of Chase Dutra, the senior safety that is a run stuffer more than a center fielder. O'Korn just put more air on it. Chris Evans now in a tailback to the right of O'Korn in the shotgun. He'll take the handoff. He's got nowhere to go. Now he'll reverse field. Maybe he does have somewhere to go. The speed from Evans keeps the play alive, and he just ran about 40 yards to pick up for. He ran 109 yards for four. <laughs> Sets up third down and six. And speaking of third down, this is where Michigan has really struggled. And it looks like we've got an injured Hoosier. Third down and six. O'Corn over the middle, right at the first down marker. He's got Gentry, and it looks as if they will give Gentry progress for a Michigan first down. I like Gentry. I, I like that guy an awful lot. And I think this Michigan staff is growing in their confidence with him as well, and that's a big one. First third down of the game, that's the matchup. O'Corn is saying, I took a shot to the head. I don't think so. That's a good shot on some pressure there from Indiana. An even better throw to stand in there. There is no courage issue with John O'Corn whatsoever. It is a decision-making challenge, a pocket awareness. He'll stand in there. He's a tough kid. Ty Isaac breaks a tackle. Hard run for about seven and a half, close to eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Tackled on the play by Allen Stallings. That's a good job of getting to the second level. You're going to see throughout this broadcast when Michigan can get to the second level and onto those linebackers. Couldn't do it against uh, Bocce in Michigan State last week. Just had such a challenge getting to the second level. Much better there for Isaac, and that is a positive play on first down. O'Corn back into the flat to Tyrone Wheatley. That should be good for another Michigan first down. T. Gray scales who is a tackling machine, is there to make the stop. And Covington can see some of the confusion. He wants a timeout there. And I'm telling you, a lot of this is built because their defense is a 4-2 nickel linebacker defense. They're built to play one back and spread teams. Covington, in fact, shifts over from a weak side linebacker to a strong side. They bring a new Mike in against so much of this two tight end and two back that you're going to get from Michigan, and I think heavy doses of it. And the fourth different tailback in the game on this opening drive for Michigan is now Kareem Walker. Redshirt freshman takes the handoff. He gets to the edge. Kareem Walker has a first down. Well, how hard is it defensively to diagnose what Michigan is going to do based purely on the number of calls they have on their call sheet? You're almost guaranteed to see something you haven't seen before, yes. correct? And a, and a challenge, especially early, is Tim Drevno and Pep Hamilton against Tom Allen are going to script it, and they're going to throw every formation and every personnel group out there, and they're going to make guys that are in some new spots think. And if you make those guys think instead of react, it is an advantage Wolverines. They actually marked... Kareem Walker out one yard shy of the first down, so second down and one. Karan Higdon has the first down and more. Inside the 20 yard line. A gain of 11 more for Michigan. And here's what I'm talking about. You talked about Covington earlier. Look at Covington here. He is usually in space, but not today. He's going to have to play a strong side linebacker. That is some new ground for him. And look at the guys up front getting on to the second level, getting to those guys. That is a key. That is not something you saw a week ago. And for Indiana, this is not what they live in. They typically live in that 4-2 defense. New people in new spots thinking. 
That could be a challenge defensively. O'Korn looking for a tunnel screen. Peoples Jones gets to the 18 yard line for a gain of two. And Brock, Michigan, they have really struggled in the red zone. That basically is the average of a Michigan play this season in the red zone. On first down, 1.8 yards through their first five games when they get inside the 20 yard line. And they have not scored many touchdowns. It's been heavy run on early downs and, and you get stuff right there for two yards. What a beautiful drive here and a mix of run and pass. Five run, five pass. And it's also finding that matchup, man. You get in the red zone, you have got to have a one on one difference maker. Chris Evans bouncing, going backwards. Lost a couple. Chris Covington, the first man there. And now Michigan is outside the red zone facing third down and long so in danger of their struggles continuing only five touchdowns on 15 drives in the red zone only four teams in FBS or worse great play by the end there McCray you want to blow the power up then blow the, the polar and get that penetration stuff it now I'm looking at those big tight ends where's Gentry where's Peoples Jones where is my matchup to get a one-on-one -on -one situation that I like Indiana rushes four. O'Korn, long throw to the corner, and it's incomplete through the hands of Grant Perry, who had a chance. So Indiana gets the red zone stop on defense, and they'll force a field goal. That looks like Wilton Spade early. Right, a right-hander throwing back to his left, and think of the Florida game and the interception high in the pick six. When you're throwing to your left there across the field, you got to drive that ball. you got to get that front shoulder down and drive it across the field. Couple misses there, a couple missed touchdown opportunities from a point on the opening drive. Quinn Nordine averages 2.4 made field, field goals per game, fourth in FBS. That's because he's getting a lot of chances to kick field goals because Michigan isn't scoring touchdowns in the red zone. But from 40 here, Nordine is good. And after the win at Virginia, a game ball was given to the head coach, Tom Allen, for his first ever win. And a second game ball was given to Tom Allen to pass along to his dad, who was back here in Indiana, recovering from quadruple bypass surgery. And that second game ball brought all of the emotions out of the head coach, Tom Allen. He was broken up, to say the least. Pooch kick comes down there along the sideline. That would have gone out of bounds if Devontae Williams hadn't fielded it. And instead, he does field it. And Tom Allen, I'll let you know, scored like 45,000. So I guess I wasn't that impressive. But it was a very, very cool game. Peyton Ramsey out of the pocket. Poor field position now for the Hoosiers. As there was a mistake on the kick return. Devontae Williams went out of bounds at the 13-yard line rather than letting a kick land out of bounds, which would have put it out to the 35. And instead, after a gain of three, second and seven, Morgan Ellison bottled up by that Michigan front after a gain of maybe a yard. Now it'll be third down and long. And those are just the plays where you say, man, maybe this moment is just a little bit too large, right? To just have an awareness of what's going on around you instead of just such a focus on your own play. If you do, you'll let that ball go out of bounds in this real estate, incredibly valuable. Third down and seven. Five-man rush. Under some pressure, and the five-man rush gets home. Great job by Peyton Ramsey to somehow flip it, unload it to Luke Timian. Did he get the first down? It looks like he did by a step. What a play by the redshirt freshman quarterback, Peyton Ramsey. A great play by everybody involved. Enough time there in a pocket that Ramsey could step into. Timian breaks off his route. He comes back to the quarterback. And then his buddy, Simi Cobb's coming in and even blocking for him. That's a team effort to move the chains. It's the kind of plays you got to make against the number one total yard defense in America. On the slant. That's intercepted. A flag down. Lavert Hill jumped the route and picked it off. We'll have to check the penalty marker. And it looks like it's going to be pass interference against Michigan to wipe away the pick. A little handsy there for Lavert. He's been their best corner. Don Brown loves him. But man, he was impressive in camp. Three pass breakups a week ago against Michigan State. He runs the route. Pass interference. Defense number 24. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Indiana is a tempo team. They're not terribly complex. Slant, fade, in cut. 
And you can see LeVert right here on the red shirt freshman. He knows what's coming, but you just tug it at that jersey. And you restrict the movement of the wide receiver. And back judge is going to see that and throw that penalty every time. Excellent call by the officials. There's a fair number of Michigan fans, as you would expect at this game. You might have heard some boos. Now movement in the line. This might be a free play. It is. Ramsey's going to take a shot. Why not? Out of bounds is Simi Cobbs. But a good decision to throw it downfield as it looked like Michigan jumped. Is there another flag that has been thrown on the far side of the field right in front of the Michigan bench? Two penalty markers down. It's going to be on Winovich, the leading sacker for the Wolverines. He jumps into the neutral zone, neutral zone 59. Heads up play by Hunter Littlejohn, the center, to snap it. I think Winovich is saying he got back. Offside. Offside. Defense number nine. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Also, Michigan has been given their official sideline warning. Sideline warning on Michigan. So that's the second flag that was thrown right in front of the Michigan bench. Yeah, and it wasn't nine, McCray. It was Winovich right in the middle there. He has the movement. And that's heads up play by Little John. That's twice now. Cadence from Indiana, knowing you have an attacking team. That's a wrinkle and adjustment you put in. Empty backfield, first and five. Backwards pass. Looking for a double pass back to the quarterback. Incomplete. Mike Majette couldn't find Ramsey. So the trick play dialed up to try and take advantage of an aggressive Michigan defense. It'll be second down and five. And that's a heads up defense. And actually, it was Furbush in the neutral zone. Not Winovich on that previous play. But Mike DeBoer, offense coordinator, said we got wrinkles. You know, this is what Purdue did. You see Furbush coming off the field. Purdue was very aggressive in their gadget plays in the first quarter to at least try to plant that into the minds of the defenders. Here comes the five-man rush. The slant on time to Timmy. That is a first down. You know, you told us we should go back and watch that Purdue tape because Purdue runs an offense similar to what we'll see out of Indiana today. So we expected to then have a good tutorial for what we would see out of Michigan's defense against this type of an offense, especially an offense with pace. And we see it here on the handoff to Majette. Brian Monet makes the stop. It's a gain of two. This may be over on that sidelines again. Michigan a bit of a mess on that previous snap. There were players still running onto the field, and I don't know if Jim is upset because he wants and felt like Indiana subbed, and he's got to give his guys the opportunity to go out there and sub. Don Brown told us this week pace should not be an issue. They were flying at practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. And they had two groups, and they were going, and they felt like the tempo they had played against enough times with, with teams, and they knew Indiana would do it. Previous play, illegal substitution, defense, had 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. It will be first down at five. Yeah, and Michigan is just running. You're going to see the players to the top of the screen running on and off the field. And you'll see one more run out onto the field even late. I and mean, that is a linebacker just not getting back into the formation. That is some communication breakdown, and that is exactly what Indiana wants to do to Jim Harbaugh. They know they can't just line up today and slam it at Don Brown and Rashawn Gary and Devin Bush and these guys. You know, they're going to double pass. They're going to screen. They're going to hard count. They're going to play with some tempo to do what they can. It's really the reverse of the other side, Bob, where Michigan huddles and they throw so much at you and you're going to try to you know, cause them to think and not react. Well, Indiana does it differently, but the same philosophy. Try to get them thinking different personnel and timing and tempo. Two different ways of giving a defensive coordinator a headache. First and five. Peyton Ramsey, he can run. And he'll jitterbug to about the 50-yard line and pick up one. Rashawn Gary stayed home and brought him down. Yeah, and so did Devin Bush right in the middle. And I would not like looking at either of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Had him pulled on the button pregame, said, glad I'm in the booth, man. No thanks. Legette, he ends up underneath Maurice Hurst for a loss of a yard. 
So first and five becomes third down and five. And Gary gets the pub, and he should. He's going to be a top five pick after next season, but Maurice Hurst does the dirty work. And he is having a phenomenal senior year. He's playing himself into the NFL, playing himself into a three-technique penetrating defensive lineman at the next level. And now Gary of that defensive group down in the three-point stance, right on the edge of the IU logo, lined up to rush the passer on third and five. Ramsey well protected though, and he's able to connect. Mike Majek, he's got a first down. Pass protection has been solid so far for Indiana. Very good. I think that stands out as much as anything here in the first frame. As Ramsey's having a time and the opportunity to get to secondary, and that time a third progression, the underneath crossing route versus zone defense. Ramsey rolls out, sidearms one to the sideline. Great one-handed catch made by Timian, but he was out of bounds. I think you see why Indiana made this move. Mike DeBoard, they didn't take it lightly. Tom Allen, why they went to the redshirt freshman to start a week ago. He had split reps through the early games of this season, but it is his job now. His toughness, his mobility, and his guts. Tenth play of the drive. And a lane for the true freshman, Morgan Ellison, who carries a tackler. 4-7. Well, Tom Allen told us yesterday about Peyton Ramsey. So when he was our scout team quarterback last year, you could see it. You could see that he is either going to become our starting quarterback or play a role to help us win. You could just see the way he commanded things as a true freshman running the scout team, and now he becomes the head coach. Well, the head coach makes that call, so he clearly thinks Peyton Ramsey is ready to do this. Big third down here. Man to man, you can see a press. You're going to have to beat press coverage. Slant through the hands of Cobbs. Now what do you do on fourth down and three? Too far for a field goal, perhaps? Inside the 35-yard line, this is that gray area, especially with college kickers. Come right back to it. And they are going to go with tempo. Fourth and three. Knocked down at the line. Khalid Hudson knocked it down on the blitz, and Michigan gets a stop on downs. Moments before that fourth down, look at Jim Harbaugh here. He is clearly calling timeout. They continue to run the play. Uh, typically, you're going to get that side judge to just run in and stop it. That action did not. This is advantage Indiana. Instead of being off the field, the Finoke's going to try to tie this game. Career from 50 plus, three for nine, one for one this year. This from 51 yards out. And it's blocked. Maurice Hurst got the block. Running with the football is Lavert Hill. And Michigan's got it on the blocked field goal return all the way down inside the Indiana 25 yard line. Check that, marked out at the 27. His dad was a defensive back way back for the New England Patriots. That's where he gets some of that burst and quickness. He's also got the size and power. That's why he has been such a difference maker this year. Five and a half tackles for loss. He was in the rotation a season ago, but he looks trimmer. He's playing with explosion. He's getting into the backfield, and that's an enormous block there for Michigan. Just when you thought Michigan might have hurt themselves with a timeout, they got the fourth down stop on a play the officials let run. Only after the play was over did they come in and say, no, Jim Harbaugh called a timeout. Well, rather than Indiana nodding the game at three, it turns into a block field goal return and great field position for Michigan. Play action shot. O'Korn, under pressure, he wanted to go downfield. And now he will flip it down the sideline. Incomplete. Trying to find Henry Pogey. Robert McCray pressured him. It'll be second down and 10. Those are one-on-ones outside. I mean, th that is going to be the evolution for O'Korn in this offense, is you have got to find the Desmond Howard. Right? You have got to find the Amara Darbo. You have got to find the guy that you believe in in one-on-one -on -one situations. That's Fox 2, double go. And you got go routes going down both sides. There's no safeties. He could have thrown the go route. It was tight coverage. Instead, he's trying to get to that check down. And in that area of the field, that you've got to find touchdowns and not settle for the field goals that they have all year. Toss to Higdon on second down. Breaks a tackle, flag down. He got to the 20-yard line. But we'll check the penalty marker. This is going to back Michigan up further. Holding 
Offense number nine. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, that's going to be the true freshman wide receiver. We missed him on a post route earlier. And uh, yeah, that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> You're trying to block a boundary defensive end right there. A great Gooch, who's 250 pounds, a grown man, a senior. That is a crackback block. You're trying to get underneath them and look at the coaching right there. Get your hands underneath because once your hands get outside the frame and you try to bear hug that end, you're going backwards. As things stand right here, Michigan is outside field goal range. So a chance for the Indiana defense on second and 20. They show pressure. They may have forced a flinch. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty remains second down. It's been a problem area for Jim Harbaugh. He's rotated a couple right tackles. We saw Ulysio earlier this season. Bushel Beatty's going to come in here, and he just flinches. He flinches because he feels that linebacker. That's now the sixth penalty for the Wolverines. Those linebackers get into those gaps. Those linemen get nervous protecting from the inside out. Higdon on second and 25 to the 37-yard line. Chase Dutra made the tackle. So after you get a blocked field goal return all the way down to the 27-yard line, you have to be thinking 90 to 95 percent of the time that sudden change and that field position has to result in points if you're Michigan. Now it's third down and 19, and they're not in field goal range yet. You it's got a get huge it. play, and you got to get into it. Don't get all of it. Just get yourself in the range where Nordine has been excellent. Oh, this is trying to play call here to get three, correct? Not to get 19. To get three points if you can and get in field goal range. And they'll do just that. Run it with Higdon. Close to the first down. Brought down only three yards shy. But that does get the job done. Chase Dutra made the stop. And here comes the field goal group to try and make it six to nothing. And this should take us to the end of the first quarter. One quarter in the books, Michigan with a 3-0 lead. They will look to add to it. Michigan has the 3-0 lead here at IU. Bob Schusen alongside Brock Ewart. Allison Williams down on the field. And in spite of getting a blocked field goal return all the way down to the Indiana 27-yard line, penalties, negative plays, brings Quinn Nordine on to try to make it 6-0 Michigan to open up the second quarter from 38 yards out. He made his first from 40 yards away. And this one is going to be good as well. Michigan six, Indiana nothing. You could afford one loss over the course of a season, especially with some of the challenging schedules that a Michigan, Notre Dame, and a USC has played. But you can ill afford that second one in the loss column. Devontae Williams will take a knee, and it will come out to the 25. Here comes a blitz off the edge. Under pressure. Not seeing it or feeling it is Peyton Ramsey. David Long came on a corner blitz, and eventually he found Ramsey inside the 15-yard line. And you could hear from the sidelines that Ramsey is hurt. He is banged up. Now, he Richard Lego. Lego can make every throw. He yes. can access every area of the field, but he is not the runner nope. that Peyton Ramsey is in any sense. And I'll run it here with Morgan Ellison. So how does this change? What Indiana's practiced all week game plan was when you take a running quarterback off the field and put a pocket passer in there. Yeah, not a ton. And I, and I say that because they know Lego inside and out. He was their starter the entire season last year. I know it is a new coordinator and a new system. It's your starter to begin the year. This just puts a little bit more focus on Simi Cobbs, those players on the perimeter, and actually opens up some of the shots down the field. Play to the strengths of your signal caller. Well, don't turn it over on third down and 22. And they will go conservative. Breaking tackles and getting loose, using a stiff arm as Majette. He almost got the first down. At the very least, bought a lot of real estate for the punt group. It'll be fourth down and a yard and a half. So no doubt Indiana will kick it away. But Michigan just surrendered a lot more real estate, I think, than Jim Harbaugh wanted on that third and long. Yeah, and you don't see Tyree Canole, the safety there, miss many tackles. 
You don't see this Michigan group miss many tackles at all. That's why they're giving up 213 yards a game. But that time in the alley there, Majette takes advantage of Canole and nearly moves the sticks. So Hayden Whitehead will kick it now from across his own 20 yard line. And it's a pretty good punt. Peoples Jones inside his own 20, up against the sideline, nowhere to go. What a flip of field position with a big gain on third down and long and a 48 yard punt. First and 10 for Michigan at their own 20 yard line. And they'll run it with Isaac. And it looks like he's got a first down and does. Falls out across the 30 to the 33 yard line for a gain of 13. And this is the brace going on the leg of the quarterback, Peyton Ramsey. Does that tell you, Brock, that that's quarterback is going to try to come back in the game? Yeah, I think so. And I've been watching him during the, the break there. And he's operating, running, <laughs> dropping back. He's a tough kid. I think he's going to give himself every opportunity to get back on the field. You know who else is a tough group, though, is this Michigan run team. And they didn't look at last week as disappointed, I think, as many on the outside did. And their ability to just continue to run at Michigan State to persevere through some of that run game. 50 rush yards in that first half. As you can see, Ramsey and Lego still warming up. I'd like to just see more commitment. I think the more you continue to do this and you run it between the 20s, especially it further sets up your play action pass. There is the play action fake for O'Corn. Looking to the sideline, nowhere to go, has to throw it away. So now it will be third down and seven. T. Gray scales, pressure John O'Corn. And I'll tell you what that pressure did, it gave him no crumb. Right, it's, it's wonderful to take check downs, but if those linebackers are going to blitz, you get seven man protect that Fox 2 protection. Those linebackers are on your check downs. It becomes seemingly a one man route and nowhere to go with the football for O'Corn and another substantial third down. O'Corn began the game four of five. He's missed on his last three. Play clock down to eight. Four man rush, third and seven. O'Corn under pressure, avoids a sack, extends the play, flips it down the sideline, and drops it in. Donovan Peoples Jones helps out his quarterback. How did O'Corn get away from the sack? That was an incredible play. And those are. <laughs> Those are just guts to make this throw. The pressure look, it gets home, he steps up. Don't step back, he steps up into it. And after three interceptions a week ago, there's not many quarterbacks that are going to make that throw. That is just simply too tight. And many will just throw it away and live to play another day. And O'Corn showing you, as I said earlier, it's not about courage or competitiveness. It's about decision making. Big time conversion on third down. If you're senior, the transfer from Houston. Back to the air. Has all day to throw, and now he might take off, and he will. Good coverage downfield by Indiana. Flags down on the slide. T. Gray Scales, one of the players there for IU. Did they hit O'Corn late after he gave himself up? Personal foul. Late hit with targeting defense number eight. The play is under further review. Well, not only is this a late hit, but they call this with targeting. Well, here's the decision. Is Tigray Scales going to stay in this game? After review, there was no targeting. There was a late hit. Personal foul, late hit on the defense number eight. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Number eight may remain in the game. There is no targeting. Hayden in the lone setback. Big penalty, though, still 15 yards. And Higdon on the carry. The seas part right up the middle. Higdon down to about the 12. A gain of 16. It becomes real simple when you study the Michigan run game. When they get onto the second level, when those guards and centers and even tackles get their eyes up and their feet moving, that was the focal point this week for Tim Drebno and crew. Eyes up, awareness, feet moving, get to the second level, and give your opportunity for these backs to get onto safeties. And clearly, Higdon there was not messing around. He's going to try to run through those tackles. And here we are in the red zone yet again. Can they score a touchdown? Higdon bounces it outside, heading for the pylon, heading for the end zone. That's a Michigan touchdown.
Last season, Michigan led the Big Ten with 41 rushing touchdowns. That's only their seventh this season, but that one about as easy as could be from 12 yards out. And that one was about a wide receiver, Crawford, coming in and blocking the safety. Make the corners tackle. Those guys love to cover a whole lot more than they do tackle. The evidence on that play is Crawford. Not only the lineman might, or Bob, getting to the second level. Oh, no, those wide receivers helping their running backs out as well. Welcome back to Bloomington, where now Michigan has a 13-point lead. And an all-too-rare instance of scoring a touchdown in the red zone. I'm sure there are fans back in Ann Arbor that are saying, finally, we got down inside the 20-yard line and managed to find the end zone, outrushing Indiana 98-6 to so far here in the first half. That third down conversion by O'Corn, dancing and moving and busting three tackles and throwing into double coverage. Circle that play. Remember that one. If Michigan continues to roll. Devontae Williams from inside the five. Buried at about the 15. We often hear players refer to one another as brothers. Well, that's really true for Indiana receiver Donovan Hale and defensive back Jonathan Crawford. There are players spotlight of the week brought to you by the United States Air Force. Now, technically, they're cousins, but they'll tell you they are like brothers. They grew up together, played alongside one another all through high school in Largo, Florida, where they won three straight district titles. When college offers started to come in, well, they narrowed down the schools to the ones that offered both of them, saying they didn't want to split up and they didn't want to split their families up either. Unfortunately, Hale has been out with an injury. Crawford out there playing today, though. And I'll tell you what, guys, no word on who would win a 50-50 ball, but don't challenge these two on the basketball court. <laughs> Syracuse and Indiana were the two finalists for their services. They actually made those two official visits together to both schools and eventually announced their commitment together to come to Indiana with Peyton Ramsey back on the field at quarterback, picking up one on first down. He'll throw on second down. And he'll just lob it to the sideline. Cobbs went out of bounds, came back in, and caught it. Was he pushed out? Did he reestablish? The official's going to let this play go, and Simi Cobbs is all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Cobbs clearly ran out of bounds. But did he reestablish? It looks like the officials will say yes. 62 yards on the throw. And now the play will be stopped. As replay may want to have a say in whether or not this 62 yard gain should stand. The previous play is under review. The ruling on the field was the player remained in bounds, made the catch. It's going to be real close. And that's Brandon Watson, and that's what Michigan gives you one on one to the perimeter press coverage and they play Watson right alongside Hill and David Long as well then came back in and made the catch plays under further review he clearly went out of bounds it's not whether or not he stayed in bounds the entire time that would be a very quick review as he took about two maybe three strides on the white paint and there was contact there and when you're in that press coverage this wasn't cover two this is man to man he was pushed out of bounds come back in What do you think? Maybe that right foot. That right foot come back inbounds and catch that ball inbounds. You could be push, pushed out. You could be forced out. And that's why you see that side judge throw his hat down on the ground right to the bottom of the screen. And you could see the side judge all over it. He's going to throw his hat to indicate he went out of bounds. And I think he is pushed out. Is that right foot catch the ball inbounds? Got to come back inbounds and make that reception. He is their one difference maker. He wears the number one. He's a kid that's fought some issues on and off the field of being consistent. But that right foot is going to be the critical one, and that is. It didn't look to me as if he had a foot back down in bounds before he possessed the ball. And it looks like they're going to have to bring this one back because, Brock, I don't think he reestablishes himself in bounds yep. with the right foot nope. before he catches the ball. Nope. 
getting pushed, which is fine, but you've got to come back in the field of play and reestablish it, and I don't think that right foot is out. Here's the call. After review, the player was forced out of bounds, but he did not establish himself back in bounds before touching the pass. Therefore, this is an incomplete pass. It will be third down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Please adjust the game clock to 9.50. What a beautiful, beautiful picture of that extra defender. And why Don Brown and Jim Harbaugh play the way they do, the style they do. If I was coaching defense, I'd do the same thing. There's no free access. There's no easy completions against Michigan ever. You're going to have to earn it. And, you know, you use those extra defenders. And Simi's got to learn in that press coverage. You know, even if you get pushed out, man, you've got to fight for your life to get back on that field and reestablish. Unfortunately, he couldn't. And crowd didn't like play they need. crowd didn't like the call, but that was the right, call. the right call. He had not reestablished himself in bounds after being forced out before catching the football. So, what a big turnaround! 62-yard completion to Simi Cobbs wiped away, and now instead it's third down and ten. And you're looking at a little bit of a zone. They love to trap coverage. Watch the eyes of these defenders and linebackers back into the quarterback, the young quarterback. Trying to bait him into a throw, showing pressure early. Play clock down to four. Only a four-man rush. So that buys some time for Ramsey. And he's able to dump it off to Machette, but well short of the line to gain. A gain of only three. So good in that down and distance. When you can do that, Bob, when you can play man-to-man -man coverage in early downs, and then you get into those third and eight plus, they love that, what they call two trap. And they're just trapping you. They're trapping your receivers. They're trapping the quarterback. They've got the eyes into the backfield, and there is nowhere to go but check it down and punt. That's why they give up 18% right there near the top of the country in third down defense and why they were number one a season ago at 21%. Returnable for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Brought down at the 41, but good field position. After Chase Dutra makes the tackle on special teams, there is a late flag thrown. Back about 15 yards upfield, though. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the return team number 14, 15-yard penalty. It's Michigan's ball, first and 10. Rolling out is O'Corn. Flips one for two to Sean McCune. Another tackle made by Dutra. John O'Korn sat out the 2015 season after transferring from Houston. He was the American Conference Rookie of the Year back in 2013, but with Wilton Spate now out with three cracked vertebrae suffered against Purdue, it's his job. Hands it off to Higdon. It'll be third down and seven for Michigan after we check in with Cassidy. It's a 13-point lead here for Michigan, Cassidy, but Indiana has a chance on third and seven to get off the field. Huge play. Straight back to throw O'Corn. Man-to-man -man down the sideline. And it's intercepted with a flag down. Eddie McDoom, the intended receiver. Rashard Fant got the pick. We'll have to check the penalty marker, and it looks like it's going to be pass interference against Fant, and the IU sideline cannot believe it. Well, it was that sideline that took away the explosive pass to Simi Cobbs, the right call, and Fant is handsy. Pass interference. Defense number 16. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He was number one in America in pass breakups a season ago. He's a career leader with over 50 of those. 
and he's a handsy guy. The hands on the entire, I don't know. I, I don't see that contact impeding the wide receiver. I don't like that call. Handful of jersey doesn't do it for you? Well, they're both fighting, so they call holding. Okay, then call a little uh, holding call. But they're both they're both fighting there. It's when you it really impede, as we saw earlier on the interception taken away from Hill. And a timeout called, I believe, from the IU sideline oh, by fearless. Tom Allen. And I'm not sure if this is Tom Allen calling a timeout for any other reason than he wants a piece of the officials and wants to be heard. I think they're hearing him. Tiny as the details, Richard Fant, just don't grab. You can have your hand out there, but the minute you get this full of jersey, that judge is going to call it. Didn't initially like the call. I didn't see McDoom fight back for it, and Tom Allen hated the call. And he called that timeout for one reason. He was going to let that sideline know, and he was going to make sure his players know he will fight for them. But Fant, once you grab and you hold a fistful of cloth, you're forcing that back judge into the call. End around to McDoom. Gets a block. Keeps the play alive and picks up a first down. And those are the details when we sit in these production meetings week after week. And another flag is thrown late, presumably for a late hit out of bounds. And this may tack on 15 more for Michigan. And Nate Hoff, 74, is a big man. But when we sit in these meetings and you hear these coaches talk about the attention to detail, the littlest of things, that's what it is for Fant. He's a senior. He knows what the route is. It's a go route. He's seen it the entire way. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number one, 15-yard penalty. The result of the play was a first down. It will be first and 10 so instead, following the 15-yard penalty. It's Kakoa Crawford that gets the late hit out of bounds. So in the end, Michigan gets a first down and loses three yards of field position. Yep. Getting a little chippy. It's been chippy the entire game. That's what happens when you lose 21 in a row to a team and 36 to 37. That's what happens when you're Michigan and you turn the ball over five times a week ago and you can't wait to get that taste out of your mouth on the field. The team's got to calm it a little bit. Broken play. Nowhere to go for Chris Evans. And Chris in that moment says, you take the negative yards. <laughs> you, you, you ran into me, you hold on the ball, and you take this shot. Chris Covington cleaned it up for Indiana, but that's a five-yard loss. Now it's Ty Isaac in at tailback with two tight ends. He'll take the handoff. He'll get met at the line. Maybe grinds out a half yard. Now it'll be third down and long. Another tackle for Chris Covington. And that's the exact blitz that Michigan State ran again and again. The two inside linebackers, you watch the Spartans do what they love, and Indiana does in some spurts as well. It is very simple for Michigan's run game. When they get their eyes up to the second level, they move it, they create lanes. And when they don't, and they let those linebackers get on top of the run, there is zero. Be smart here if you're O'Corn. Michigan breaks the huddle with 10 on the play clock, and O'Corn looking over to the sideline. Five to snap it. Wide receiver screen. Close to the first down is Peoples Jones, but brought down a yard and a half shot. When Jim Harbaugh said the best brains are on it. Right, we asked him, how do you get back to form? What do you say? Well, we got the best minds in football. We're on it. And that's now two third down situations where they're really taking the decision making out of the hands of O'Corn. They're talking about that first down run game. I promise you that. Because that kind of bungled the entire drive. But you've seen Drevno and Harbaugh say on third down, instead of you reading and reacting and throwing into coverage, we're going to run it for 14. And in that case, we're going to throw a little bubble screen. In essence, the same deal, really protecting the quarterback in those third downs. Brad Robbins to punt it. Jayshon Harris, who's got two punt return touchdowns, calls for a fair catch and runs up under it at the 25-yard line. That's only a 25-yard punt. Peyton Ramsey well protected on first down, a strike over the middle to Timmy. Can Indiana get points on the board before halftime with five minutes to go in the half? That's a gain of 18. Michigan will start the third quarter with the football. 
Really right, nice route in front of the linebacker. McCray right there. That was a little bit of zone coverage, and that is a matchup advantage you have with some of your slots against McCray at linebacker. They're going to take another shot to Simi Cobbs. At some point there, number one has caught a slant. He caught the go route, was just out of bounds. They're going to take another shot to their go to most explosive playmaker on offense. A slant again to Timmy. Eight more across the 50 in front of Tyree Kennel. And it looks like we have an injured Hoosier. Part of that group up front. This is an official's timeout for an injury. Injury timeout. That's Ian Thomas, the tight end. Junior college transfer from Nassau Community College on Long Island. And off to Morgan Ellison. Breaks a tackle. First down. A gain of eight for the true freshman. After his junior year in high school, Morgan Ellison broke his right leg. Following his sophomore year, he had broken his left leg. So there was very little recruiting tape on him. And he was the last commit to this current class at IU, and they're happy to have him. He picked up a first down there. Ramsey, the middle of the field there. And he runs out at the 35, a gain of six. And we have another injured player, this one from Michigan. This is Tyree Kennel, who is down. Simi Cobbs blocked Kennel, and Kennel didn't get up after Cobbs hit him. Second down and four after the six yard scramble by Peyton Ramsey. Simi. Quarterback keeper for one. Third down and three. Rashawn Gary ended up bringing down Ramsey. He is so good. And I know he is just a true sophomore, and the numbers don't reflect the level of dominance that Gary brings to that position. He will be a top 10 pick next year. Timeout called by Michigan on defense as they were late trying to get set before. A very important third down play. You have to play four quarters of ball, and this is a big drive and a big play for Indiana here. And Michigan shows blitz. Ball start. Offense number 80. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. So Ian Thomas shook off the injury just in time to commit a false start. Now this really changes things. Third down and eight. Cadence has been good the first two times. We moved the chains once, got you another free five yards, but eventually that cadence, that hard count, caught the Hoosiers. Wolverine still show blitz. Cobbs to the bottom of the field. Under pressure. Five come, and Peyton Ramsey escapes. Hurls one downfield with a flag down in the secondary. Boy, Peyton Ramsey showed some athleticism to get away from the blitz. Chase Winovich was after him. This is going to be a hold against Cobbs on the other side. Maybe all that screaming and yelling and hooting and hollering at those side judges and back judges on that sideline. Been busy on that sideline of the Hoosiers today. I think that may be against 22. David Long reaching and grabbing after Simi Cobbs. Before the pass, holding defense number 22. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, if you're going to call it on my guy, and you're going to grab and you're going to hold and hold on to that jersey, you have to do it on the other side. Those DBs, you just got to learn. I, I love the broadcast last night. Syracuse crew and, and Clemson crew wearing boxing gloves, so you can't reach and grab. You can have your hand there, but you just can't hold on to that cloth. It's a technique that Dabo and Clemson have done with his guys. Too many reaching, too many holding calls. Ninth first half penalty on Michigan. Ramsey, let's coming. Man-to-man -man coverage. Lofts it to the sideline, but out of bounds. And there was Devin Bush coming like a rocket right up the middle into Peyton Ramsey. I can't tell you how much this stinks 
and he is so deceptive. We talk about it with running backs, and you highlight it all the time with the little running backs that get lost. I think Jaquiz Rogers jumps out to me as much as anybody that I ever saw in college football. They just hide behind those linemen, and all of a sudden there is a burst and explosion. And he is dynamic. Nowhere to go. Rashawn Gary forcing Peyton Ramsey to short hop it intended for Mike Majette, but Majette was covered. It'll be third down and ten. Such a sound defense. You're covered by who? That's one thing to be one dimensional and rush the passer. No, 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 no. That's Devin Bush right there in coverage. He's running the play. He is a step faster on that side. So sound. You're exactly right. And now Devin Bush lines up to the bottom of the screen as if he's in man to man coverage as a cornerback. He's got him. Might be a free play. Why not take a shot at the end zone? And another flag thrown in the offensive backfield after the play was over. Maurice Hurst might have gotten tagged twice. Did he jump off and then did he rush rough the quarterback? This has been a common scene here in the first half. An officials conference at times with multiple flags thrown and a lot to come away with. Might be two fouls against Michigan. There are three fouls on the play, all against the defense. Wow. Offside, defense, number seven. That penalty is declined. Holding, defense. Number 28, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, drove the passer into the ground. Defense number 73, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Now this is four occasions, three of them have benefited you. You're gonna see the offsides right here. The two Wolverines are gonna jump, get into the neutral zone. Now this is what I'm doing if I'm a young quarterback. Where is number one? When I said he got him, Right, look that safety off. Where is he? That's the guy that I'm going to go to. That is my difference maker. Find a way to get Cobbs the ball. Ramsey on first down. Again looking for Mike Majette. Late coming out of the backfield and again has to throw it into the dirt because he was bracketed. Second down. And that was just a screen pass. The other was play action. That was a screen that went nowhere. And here was the hit on Hurst as he drives that quarterback into the ground. Obviously going at the next level, that's accompanied by a fight. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 16. Move the pocket. Instead move the quarterback. And not much place to move. Mike McCray stays home and brings down Peyton Ramsey after a gain of two. So a big third down now for Indiana in the red zone. Again, Michigan begins the third quarter with the football, so wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for Indiana to work on the clock here as well. Big third down play here. Right here. That safety may have something to do with it. Look that safety off. You have got to find a way to get your difference makers in what is man-to-man. -man. Get that safety out with your eyes. Instead, it's a shot over the middle. Intended for Taysier Mack. He didn't even look towards Simi Cobbs, and it will be a field goal attempt. No, he's looking at his arms that are getting bruised and beaten up like the rest of his body in this first half. Look at that. Look at the bloody forearm right there. Welcome to playing Michigan in this group if you want to be a running quarterback. So Griffin Oaks who two years ago was the Big Ten kicker of the year. Last year, a terrible season, but off to a perfect start. So far this year, he's five for five. This from 32 yards out. And Indiana able to break through and get on the board, down now by 10. Coming up at halftime, we'll check in with Kevin Nagandi, Mac Brown, Booger McFarland. They'll have the State Farm halftime report. Syracuse, well, he certainly tripped up the Tigers. For Wazoo, 
pathetic front runners. That's a quote. You'll want to hear from who. And road troubles for NC State as well. All that and more. Scores and highlights coming up with Kevin Mack and Booger at the half. What a crazy Friday night, huh? Two top ten teams go down on the road. And you know what? You know you're going to see more of that today because those two teams, even though we have no ranked versus ranked matchups this week in college football, there are 12 teams that are ranked that are on the road or on a neutral field. You're going to have some teams that are going to get upset. Two things. Conference play. There's a familiarity that breeds a lot of contempt. And then number two, when you're in the top ten, you will get everybody's best shot in that stadium, Syracuse. When was the last time it looked and sounded like that in, yep. in, in, that, in that building? You will get everybody's best effort, just as Wazoo did last night against the Cal team, just as Oklahoma got from Iowa State, just as all these ranked teams are going to get today from a conference foe that knows them. This will go through the back of the end zone and come out to the 25-yard line. Michigan still with one timeout, 1.46 to go before halftime. And they give it to Higdon. He thought he kept the play alive, but the officials rule him down after a gain of three and a half. Michigan getting the ball here in the second half. I think you just play this thing very conservatively. You played it that way on some of those third downs. You're going to get the ball to begin the second half. You're up 10 points in this building. And you know with your defense how hard it is for that offense on the other side, how difficult it is for a bloodied redshirt freshman to move the ball consistently against your group. Another handoff to Higdon. It'll be third down and three. Chase Dutra made the stop. And if you're Indiana, maybe you trusted your just offensive situation a little bit more. You'd think about those timeouts, but... I think appropriately played here by both coaches going into halftime. Confidence, that was the word for Tom Allen and his team. He asked every player on this team to find one word to define themselves, and then each week he's got one word to define the matchup. And this week it was confidence. Yep. Not sure how much confidence they'll have in the second half down by 10, but very much in the game, third down and three. Michigan just trying to run the clock out and get to halftime. And the play clock goes all the way to zero. They take a delay of game. Well, now it becomes third down and eight. And now you wonder if Indiana may think about using a timeout after the third down play if they get a stop just to force a punt and give a very dangerous punt returner yes. an opportunity. So I would think, IU, this now probably brings their timeouts into play. And it does. And I think you're right when you're talking about Jay Play a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. This foul goes with a 10-second runoff. Please set the game clock to 11 seconds. If I were Indiana, you don't want the runoff. You probably want the time on the clock just in case you are able to get a punt return if you get a stop on third down. The 10 second runoff is designed to penalize the team that benefits yep. from the clock running. And now the clock starts again. Michigan doesn't even need to run a play. Yep. And that will take us to halftime. And we are watching a big time defense do what Michigan so often does. And that is snuff out a pretty good opponent's offense. 13 3, Michigan has the lead at halftime. As we take a look at our first half stats, brought to you by Dell Technologies. And Brock, only 22 yards on the ground for IU. Yeah, and it's not been for effort 14 runs. And it's been quarterback run, it's been the different tailbacks, bubble screens, trying to do all you can against a suffocating Michigan defense that is just faster than you. And, and not just on the track, right? not just in winter conditioning, but most importantly, out here on a football field led by Devin Bush and Rashawn Gary. And I thought we would see Michigan's best effort defensively. Heck, they played that way last week against Sparty. I mean, their defense played their tails off. They have not given up a point in the fourth quarter this season. They, you, they, they don't wear down. They are relentless, and they played so in the first 30 minutes of this game. And now they have a chance to start the third quarter with the football as they won the toss to start the game and deferred. 
So with a 10-point lead, Michigan looking for a bounce back after a five turnover loss last week against Michigan State. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. So here comes John O'Corn. And a moment ago, Allison had a chance to catch up with Coach Harbaugh. Coach Harbaugh, what did you say to address the 11 penalties with your team? Yeah, we, we can't have them. Can't have the penalties. We gotta, can't have played to the whistle. Mm -hmm. After the whistle, got to stop. How do you think your defense has responded to the tempo Indiana wants to play with? That's, you know, it's uh, created some issues, as you can see. Had to call a timeout twice. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Indiana starts the second half with a tackle for loss. And the tempo on both sides, Brock, has a chance to toy with the defensive coaches for the other side. Yep. But three points for Indiana in the first half says it all. But it still comes down to winning your blocks up front. Those one-on-one -on -one matchups so often. We talk about them on the perimeter, but that time Jacob Robinson just beats Ben Bredesen. You come out of halftime, you want to establish that early down run. When you want it, when you run it, and you just get beat in those one-on-ones, put yourself behind the chains. Hard to operate with efficiency on offense. Koa Crawford walls his man off and picks up about five as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And it was defense in the first half for Michigan as they backed up a rush offense that put 113 yards and a touchdown on the board, but they often control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but bloodied and bruised was Peyton Ramsey. Got knocked out of the game, found a way to get back in. He's going to fight through a lot of it in the second half, but this defense is no fun to play against. And offensively, Hickman with 70 yards rushing in that first half. Some creases, some lanes, just not consistent enough. And Indiana start off the second half, though, with a third down stop. Higdon motions out of the backfield. They swing it that way, high and over his head as O'Corn misses. So it will be a three and out to start the second half for Michigan. Indiana forces close to seven three and outs per game, second best in FBS coming into today. That's a win. I mean, if you're Indiana defensively, that's a minute and 22 seconds off the clock. That is that three and out that you've been chasing this game. You put your offense back on the field who had their best possession before half scoring those points. And here's Brad Robbins to kick it, although he doesn't want to kick it to Jay Sean Harris where Jay Sean Harris will have a chance at a return. But he may get a chance here. Calls for a fair catch at the 36 yard line. That might have been a break for the Wolverines as Harris has two punt return touchdowns this season. Look at the bloodied arm there. It is taped up now. I love Don Brown on the other side who said, put your courage on the table. That's what I asked my guys to do. And just look at that. That is one beat up guy was Peyton Ramsey. The knee brace came on. Uh, Coach Allen said to Allison going into halftime, his ankle is sore. That's why you see him limping. Got banged in the thigh. <laughs> Welcome to playing quarterback against these guys in maize and blue. Pretty good field position for the Hoosiers, down by 10 at their own 36-yard line. Ramsey looking for a rhythm throw. Nothing's there. Intended on the slant for the redshirt freshman, Taysir Mack. And guys, I had a chance to chat with Peyton's dad, Doug, who was his high school coach. And he said from the time he was a youngster, he has been so incredibly competitive, always had a big time work ethic, and it's a big reason why he was able to earn this starting job. Well, Morgan Ellison finds a cutback lane, a rare breakdown in the Michigan defense. All the way to the 34-yard line. Now the 33 is where they mark Ellison down. What a, great, 31. what a great block by Ian Thomas right there on the edge. He makes it happen. There's not many tight ends that block Rashawn Gary. Rashawn's looking for the hold. That's a good pin by the tight end to set up the run. Six-yard gain. Mike McCray makes the stop on Morgan Ellison once again. Nowhere to go on second down for Ellison now a third down and four just outside the 25 yard lot and you're going to get man to man coverage more than likely you're going to get heated up here saw this formation earlier they tried to just throw a quick to the flat looking that way once again it's Ramsey but it's bottled up 
coming back to help the quarterback. And making a move down the sideline is Luke Timian. Inside the 10 yard line before he's bumped out. Well, it ended up being to the flat, but it was a whole lot later, and that was the improv there of a Peyton Ramsey. What you have got to do against this defense, if it is not there initially, you have got to buy time, you've got to create, and Timian, one of the first missed tackles of the Wolverines. Up the middle goes Morgan Ellison for the touchdown. What a turnaround for Indiana to start off the third quarter. swing in momentum in the first three minutes of the third quarter. There is the true freshman Morgan Ellison. His third touchdown run of the season. A three and out for Indiana's defense. Quick down the field for their offense. Two big runs from Ellison. He caps it with a touchdown. Bob Bashusen alongside Brock Ewart. Allison Williams down on the field. And we've got a football game. It felt like Michigan looked at those halftime stats. 22 rushing yards, thought they could just line up. And Indiana said, we're not done. We're not going to quit. This is going to be a four-quarter game. And they were the aggressor at the point of attack on that possession. And it's going to come out to the 25-yard line on the touchback. And top Ron Higdon, wrapped up by Chris Covington, but grinds out three yards. And Brock, it's nothing new for Indiana to be in the game with Michigan. We were here a couple of years ago for a game that went to double overtime. And last season, and what turned out to be a 20 to 10 loss in a snowstorm, Indiana had a second half lead. Air Force was in the game. We called the Cincinnati game earlier this year against Michigan as well. I mean, teams have been in the game. Michigan doesn't have the explosive firepower all over the place offensively. They settled for a couple field goals, and this is no surprise. This is what the score is at this juncture. Toss to Higdon. Lockers out in front, patiently waits for them to pave the way, and he picks up a first down. A gain of 10 more for Karan Higdon. I would be fascinated if we see nothing but run on this. Just get into a situation where you're going to keep your defense over there on the sidelines a little bit, and if you just committed to run, 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 run on every single snap to see, because you have been productive today. Higdon's got nearly 100 yards, got 82 yards rushing right now. And yeah, you'll get hit in the mouth on occasion against some of these stunts of Indiana up front, but I'd love to see that kind of conviction and commitment to that run game. Now it's Ty Isaac in. He gets a chance. Because I think it's about the 44. I think it allows you to get a feel, some rhythm to get to that second level. When you study Michigan's run game through the course of the season, it's pretty clear. And when the big fellas, Owenu and crew, can get to that second level and you give these backs a lane, they're going to do some damage. An excellent job on the touchdown run as well. Look at fullback, right guard, and then you know, really importantly as well, your wide receiver Crawford coming down on the safety. We don't talk about rhythm in a run game nearly as much as we do in the passing game, but there is an element to it. Isaac again. That's a first down. And sometimes, isn't there something to be said for the attitude yes. of a football team on the road that says, we are bigger and we are stronger than you, and we're just going to come out and show that? Yes, and especially when you're facing a defense that really is built for so much spread in one back. Right? Maybe against other teams that play a traditional 4-3 or what have you, like you got on your side. But this is a team that loves the 4-2-5. Go attack them. It also must be nice for the prima donna golden boy quarterback to be able to just hand it off and then take credit for the points that come at the end of that drive. better feeling. I know. A feeling you know all too well, I'm sure. Higdon off play action. Instead, O'Korn goes deep into double coverage. Well, you want the run game to set up play action if it can. Kakoa Crawford, though, was bracketed. Richard Fan knocked it away, but there was nowhere to go on that deep shot from O'Korn. Yeah, Heels when, underneath, Fant over the top. And when you call those shot plays, you got to read it out. Where are you going here? You've got the post here, but more importantly, read out the coverage. Don't predetermine. Where are you going? 
Are you going to throw that post in double coverage? You got tight end. Higdon running wide on second down. Does well to stay in bounds. Let's see where they mark him out. Picks up at least two or three yards on what could have been a tackle for loss. They'll actually give him four yards. So it's third down and six. I get it. I mean, I get that first down call. As you see Andre Brown, the boundary corner down. He's favoring that shoulder. He went out earlier in the game. And Andre Brown, the redshirt sophomore, has now been replaced by Raheem Lane, who is a true freshman at corner. So we'll see if John O'Corn sees that matchup and maybe tries to take a shot at it. There is Raheem Lane. Had three tackles this season against Ohio State and Georgia Southern. A couple of interceptions as a senior in high school. But this different level pressure now against Michigan midway through the third quarter. And I love Grant Perry in these situations as well. Four-man rush on third and six. McCorn steps up, sidearms one, and it's dropped. Sean McCune had a chance to haul it in. He was being tracked by the true freshman, Raheem Lane. And now it's fourth and six. And here comes the punt group. I mean, get what you want. If you're Tim Trevno, you've got exactly what you want on that first down call and third down. Grant Perry cleared it out underneath. Your tight end is coming across. You get what you want. You just have to execute, and especially when you go out on the road in conference play. Wobbly kick from Robbins. Fair catch at about the 12. New gear for Michigan over the past few years. Midway through the third quarter, Bob Schusen here with Brock Heward. Allison Williams as well, and now Indiana with a chance to tie or take the lead, but starting at their own 12-yard line. Quarterback keeper for Ramsey. And he starts off the drive with a four-yard gain, tripped up by Chase Winovich. He's going to be sore tomorrow. I like the story we heard yesterday, though. Indiana, like a lot of programs around the country, brings the military in at times and some of those Navy SEALs. And even as a freshman, it was the upperclassmen that were looking at the toughness of that guy, the coach's son with the linebacker mentality. Gain of a couple from Morgan Ellison. Well, Peyton Ramsey, as we've been saying, is the son of a coach. As Rashawn Gary, a little slow to get up. Looks like he'll stay on the field, but his dad, Doug, coaches Elder High School in Cincinnati. And when Peyton Ramsey was six years old, he was at practice all the time when his dad was winning back-to-back -back state championships. So he has been raised to be in this moment. The starting quarterback on third down at IU. Over the middle, broken up. Intended for Timian. Tyree Kennel, though, knocked it away. And Michigan gets the three and out. And Ramsey's looking at man-to-man -man coverage, and you do everything textbook there. Now, if you go on a whiteboard and you teach at clinics, how am I going to beat man-to-man? -man? You motion across. You know it's man. You get in a stack alignment. You run a little angle route underneath it. It doesn't matter. Because you know what? Kennel on the other side knows exactly what's coming as well. He knows how people try to defeat that man coverage. The safety jumps in front, knocks it away. Good punt over the head of Evans. And up against the sideline from Hayden Whitehead. Let's see will they mark it out at the Michigan 35, 48-yard punt with no return. And we have a football game here with seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Michigan has the field goal lead, but a turnaround for Indiana. And they have made it a field goal game here in the third. Wide receiver, quick hitter to Kakoa Crawford, and that was diagnosed immediately by Tony Fields. Right up the road from Indianapolis. Here in Bloomington, perfect day for football. Under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. And now Michigan's offense off schedule again, second down and 12. Quarterback keeper for O'Corn, and he pays the price. It'll be third down and eight. Greg Gooch was able to swamp under O'Corn. I just think when you get into those one-back sets, man, you're playing into the advantages that Indiana does and has defensively. They'll run sideline to sideline with anybody. They, they, they welcome that one-back. An opening little bubble screen, that time a little zone read. It's been a lot more of the two-back run, the heavy run that they've had more of a challenge with. It's an awfully big third down for the energy in this building.
Five man rush. Delayed blitz. O'Korn tried to check it down underneath. And he had Karan Higdon on a screen with some blockers out in front. But Greg Gooch was involved in maybe hurrying that throw. Well, there is no doubt. Greg Gooch <laughs> and his crew up front, we've seen this on a couple different occasions. They will just sacrifice for their buddies. And that's what the best defenses do. And he just went and he just nailed the right guard there before he could ever get out on that screen. And it just totally discombobulated the timing of it. That is a big three and out. Back to back now, three and outs. Excuse me, two out of three series, three and outs in the second half here for Indiana. Punted along the sideline by Brad Robbins. That's a pretty good kick, keeping it away from Jay Shun Harris. Let's go down to Allison. Well, Peyton Ramsey, as a coach's son, raised for games like this, also actually named for them. He was actually named after the Peyton Manning, and that's kind of a common theme in his family. His older brother's name is Tanner, but his full name is actually Montana for Joe Montana, of course, and younger brother Drew, named for Drew Bledsoe. So Doug, their dad, tossed it up to their mom, Jerry, and she said, I don't know about Joe for Joe Montana, but I'll go with Montana. And that's uh, all the names for the boys there. And how appropriate Peyton Ramsey makes his first collegiate start on the same weekend when Manning is getting his number retired and statue unveiled just up the road in Indianapolis. Field position now on the side of Indiana, or check that on, of Michigan as the IU sideline was not happy with the spot of the punt all the way down to the 15 yard line. So Aiden Ramsey again with a chance to tie or take the lead, but backed up. Start on the ground with Morgan Ellison. He goes up the middle for two. Morgan Ellison again broke his left leg as a sophomore, broke his right leg as a junior in high school. So he had less than one year of high school football tape for recruiters to look at. He got the last spot of the current class of freshmen here at Indiana. The IU coaching staff was actually holding a scholarship for a linebacker prospect that they ended up not getting. And the late scholarship opened up, and Ellison jumped on it. Ramsey, zone read. A yard, third down and seven. Coming from the 18-yard line, another tackle for Winovich. I think these two series now, back to back, I think this is a little bit of Tom Allen, a defensive-minded head coach that is watching his defense play, and he knows that if they get in this fourth quarter and it remains this score, the pressure falls on who? It falls on that other sideline that are in, it's in the playoff race right now. You know, who lost a game in the second half last week to Michigan State. Very conservative calls on the early downs, back-to-back -back drives. Under pressure with the blitz coming, and nowhere to go for Peyton Ramsey. Maurice Hurst and Rashawn Gary, they got to the quarterback simultaneously. They were bringing Khalid Hudson on a blitz as well. Yeah, that's part of the reason you're also conservative, because these two monsters right in the middle, you just can't block them one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen Hurst a bunch of times with his penetration. He's right in the middle, just cleanly beating the center there. And Rashawn Gary, good for him. And he has played so hard this season. I asked Don Brown, how is he hanging in there? Many times people treetop and look at the stats. Don't realize how good he's been this season. Donovan Peoples-Jones. Gang tackled at the Michigan 45-yard line. A 42-yard punt for Hayden Whitehead. Let's take a look at some images from the progressive pylon cam. And that was the touchdown from Morgan Ellison that made this a three-point game. Karan Higdon has a one of his own and that was about as easy as it gets is it going to be the run game for one of these two teams that's ultimately going yes. to be the determining factor because neither of them has gotten anything going through the air or one critical big explosive play but again i'll say it that what i said two series ago run the ball just run it three consecutive times and see what happens for you around hector and there's the first of what might be three consecutive runs, we'll see. It only picked up a yard and a half. Mike nice Barwick on the top. Yeah, Barwick and Robinson right in the middle. I mean, these are big physical guys now for Indiana. Uh, they're built for this game. They're built for this moment. These are six seniors in your front seven. It is eight seniors on that defense that have been oh so close to Michigan the last two seasons. Overtime in this building two years ago. Had the lead at this juncture last season up in Ann Arbor. Commit to the run, though. 
toss to Higdon. Nothing there on the cutback. No gain on second down. It'll be third down and eight. Good pursuit by Chris Covington. And a nice job by the IU defense of setting an edge as Higdon had to come right back into all the traffic. These moments we've seen conservative play calling for Jim Harbaugh. We saw a third down run in the first half. We saw a bubble screen taking some of the reading and the decision making out of a quarterback who last week felt like he had to make something happen. And some critical interceptions in that second half been clean in the turnover column today. Chris Evans lines up just behind O'Corn. Third down and eight. Now he empties the backfield. Shovel pass. Flags down. Oh, and that was going to be good. Before the ball was snapped, delay a game, offense, five yard penalty. Third down. Oh, they had it set up. That's a killer for Michigan. They sure did. When you had outside pressure, Jim knows it. You had exactly what you want. You got field pressure there. That blitz was going to run right by that inside shovel pass. He's yelling at John. You got to set that whole operation up quicker. You got to get that motion out a little bit faster. Now 12 penalties for Michigan. 12 accepted penalties. Third down and 13. O'Corn, long throw, broken up. Jonathan Crawford had a chance at a pick. Like a few of those earlier throws, this is a really tight window. Again, your checkdowns are having to block. Crawford's going to kick himself. Tom Allen said to us yesterday, 10 interceptions are missed. Takeaways is what they preach on that sidelines as well. Had taped through the first five games of this season, and 10 of those moments like this, not easy. These are not easy gimme interceptions, but those can be the game-changing varieties in one-score contests. Brad Robbins to Jayshon Harris. This one he'll try and bring back from the 10. Good coverage. Dangerous return man that averages 23 yards per return, bottled up. At his own 16-yard line, and it has been exactly, Brock, what you said it would be for Peyton Ramsey, a day where he will get hit harder than he's ever been hit in his life. Yeah, you know you're not going to call him a prima donna quarterback. I can only work with one of those at a time. <laughs> yeah, some of the Indiana folks yesterday in our production meeting, kind of their, their face kind of scrunched up when I said the quarterback's going to get hit harder than he ever has. And, you know, the head coach agreed with me. He knew. He knew what, what this group was going to be up against. It's a numbers game when you play Michigan. As much man-to-man -man as you see, your quarterback has to run. Peyton's been brave. Tipped ball at the line. Almost intercepted. It hops to Noah Furbush. Well, Tom Allen is a defensive coach. He knows, as a defensive play caller, if he had the Michigan defense, what he would be doing. Yep. He'd be sending heat and trying to blow Peyton Ramsey up all day long if he could. And they have gotten there plenty of times, but he actually fought off an injury in the first half where they had to put a brace on that left knee and got, it back, got himself back in the game. There is Sidney Cobbs. Five-man rush. Low throw is scooped up by Mike Majette for a gain of three. Another third down coming for Indiana. And all Devin Bush did on back-to-back -back plays was tip the first one, not the size of the man in the fight. As Devin Bush is listed about 5'10", gets his hands up, deflects it, almost forces the pick, and then he's going to motion out and just cover it back and be right in his lap. That kid does everything at that position. IU is three for 10 on third down against the second best defense in America on opponent third down conversions. Another five-man rush. Back shoulder. Cobbs doesn't turn around. So it will be a three and out for Indiana. They'll have to kick it back to Michigan. And on the flip side, if I'm asking for Michigan run, I am just going to throw three jump balls to him. I'm not going to try to be perfect. Maybe slam. In fact, the second down play was a little stack alignment. He runs a wheel route. He's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And I think eventually if you're going to break through, which is the slogan for this university right now in their football program, break through. It's going to have to be number one with the explosive play. Good kick under duress with a flag down. 
Peoples Jones breaks a tackle. Out of bounds near midfield. We'll have to check the marker back at the line of scrimmage. During the kick, holding return team number 27. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. So another Michigan penalty. That is their 13th accepted penalty on the day. Chris Evans on first down. A gain of a couple. How about Alex Smith while well, the topic is the Chiefs? He might be the league's MVP when during the offseason, heading towards free agency, he watched his team trade up in the first round to draft his replacement. So competition a good thing? I think Alex would tell you that, yeah, he knew he had to perform. He knew he had to take a little bit more risk. He knew he had to bring a little bit more playmaking to the table, which is exactly what he and the Chiefs have done through the first five. Anything about them a mirage, or do you think they're the best team in the league? No, I think their record the last couple years has been pretty indicative of how balanced that team is. Second down and eight. Right up the middle. It's Chris Evans. A gain of four. It will be third down and four for Michigan to start the fourth quarter. And balance is what this crew is seeking. Balance is what's going to win this game in this fourth quarter. Who can find any level of a passing game to complement the end of the, third the quarter for the run? Welcome back to Indiana. We begin the incredibly tense fourth quarter. Not sure Rashawn Gary feels it. <laughs> the only team in FBS to have yet to allow a point in the fourth quarter. And Michigan defense, they're used to playing in pressure situations because every game feels in the fourth quarter for them like a pressure situation because their offense struggling so much to put points on the board and they begin the fourth with a third down. O'Corn over the middle, broken up. It'll be another punt to start off the fourth quarter for Michigan. Bob Schusen here with Brock Heward. Allison Williams down on the field. And what I'm sure for every one of these conference games we move through the season, Brock, is going to feel like a real war for Jim Harbaugh and Michigan. They're in another low-scoring battle. Well, remember we asked him before that Cincinnati game, did you still get it? Does it still feel like when you run out of that tunnel as it did with a, as a player? And he said no. Now it feels like a root canal, <laughs> right? The difference between coaching and, and playing and being free to play versus just managing every minute and every call of these games. Jason Harris inside his own 20 yard line. Tiptoes along the sideline and gets out of bounds across the 30 at the Indiana 32. As Michigan continues to put their defense in zero margin for error positions as Indiana has another chance down by three now early in the fourth quarter. Play action. Ramsey. And there is the Michigan defense bottling up a little tunnel screen. Wap Fillier is dropped for a loss of three. No, thank you. No, 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 don't call that. <laughs> Don't do that one again. Nobody, nobody enjoyed that. <laughs> the receiver certainly didn't. You're expecting blitz. That's why you make that call. You're expecting some first down pressure. You don't get it, and you get hit for a negative play. That's probably why you'd want to do this. You know, get that little freeze look to see if you get that pressure and get out of that play versus base personnel. Play clock down to five. Another look over for Peyton Ramsey. Play clock at two. And they get the snap off. And there's a screen back to the near side. This time getting loose is Mike Majette. Close to a first down, about a yard short. Looked like the same play, just to the opposite side of the field. And this time a lane opened, and we have an injured Mike McCray down for Michigan. Yeah, you're going up against a linebacker. There is a little bit more space. Right? Instead of running right back into the line of scrimmage immediately. You're going to get your running back. We see that on a few different occasions today. Some matchup football as well. You may not be a pro style formation shifts movements, but a few more formations today to get Majette on McCray, the linebacker. So Mike McCray off the field. 
The only returning starter from this Michigan defense for last season. His dad was a captain at Ohio State. And he was not necessarily happy that Mike chose Michigan. A few months after he committed, Urban Meyer did offer him, but he stayed with his commitment to the Wolverines. Third down and one. Straight ahead run. Did the freshman get there? Morgan Ellison. About a half yard shot. Maurice Hurst, Devin Bush combine on the tackle. And Indiana can't pick up the yard. It'll be fourth down and a half yard. Just across their own 41 yard line. Crowd wants them to go for it. Can't do it. But in a three point game, it looks like they're ready to send the punt group out. Hurst has made himself some money today. This is about the fifth occasion here when you were a big man and you could get in the backfield tackle for loss again and again and again. It's been different moves, right? It's been the power move. It has been that move, the swim move right there. Difference maker. Dominant in third and one. Fourth consecutive three and out for Indiana. Nichols Jones calls for a fair catch at Michigan's 16-yard line. And we have gone 13 minutes of game action without either of these two teams getting a first down. Ron Higdon. That's a pretty good start. Seven and a half yards right up the middle. Amy and Willis, Chase Dutra sandwiched him at the 23-yard line. I think I like that element the most. You know, you're running power, and these guys are chipping off your polars. You're running toss sweep. These guys can run laterally. You run right at them. That isolation play, that two-back simplify them, run right at them between the tackles. No mystery here. Two tight ends, and Higdon has the first down. The first first down in quite a while, as we said. Close to 14 minutes of game action for either team. T. Gray Scales made the stop. And this is what they did a year ago. It's what they did a year ago when they wore Indiana down. 19 times in the second half, they ran the power play. And whether it's ISO, whether it's power, you keep those two tight ends or those two backs in, and you play to your strengths when the game matters the most. Over 100 yards, as you can see, for Higdon for the first time this season. He gets another try. This time, lost his footing, picked up two. Now, Karan Higdon, he's a really interesting young man. Joint forces with a former Michigan defensive back, Wayne Lyons, and those two wanted to make a difference in the community. So they got together and started an after-school program for at-risk kids called FD, Empire for the Youth. And he knew he was blessed to be a running back in Michigan and wanted to pass that along to some at-risk kids. Replaced now by Evans. Evans finds a lane. He's got a first down. A gain of 10. It's four consecutive runs. That's ISO power. That's ISO, and that, that is power. Right, and the difference is polars. Isolation, you're just trying to man block and get your fullback on the linebacker at the second level. That power concept, you're blocking down and then you're bringing your pullers around. But all four of those run plays right between the tackles and you move the sticks twice. Timeout's going to have to be called from the bench by Indiana. After the Indiana timeout, ten and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter, first and ten. And a handoff to Higdon. And it Parts up the middle. There goes Karan Higdon. Touchdown. 59 yards. Just what Michigan needed. Tom Allen hates it, but it is a commitment that is five straight runs, and he knows it. A year ago, it was two backs, it was two tight ends, it was 19 times. This play came running right downhill at you. And you can't execute it any better than that in the safety flinches. Who was going to flinch? Who was going to make the mistake right there? The safety flinches. It's a hat on a hat. Henry Poggi leading the way there at fullback. An excellent block down there from the right tackle, Bushel Beatty. And a big time finish from Higdon on a big time day. 162 yards and a couple touchdowns. And boy, does that change this game. The field, the extra point is good from Quinn Nordeen. 2010 rule Marines when you commit to running the ball you don't just wear down a team physically you wear them down mentally as well watch two guys Chase Dutra has played a really good game T Gray scales in front of him watch their reaction right off the snap see scales you see that little reaction that half step as he's following the fullback that's the difference and Dutra just freezes here 11 tackles 10 of them solo but he missed that one
Tom Allen's reaction told you everything that you needed to know right there. You can wear people out physically. Yes, you can beat them up. You can also wear them out mentally. They lose one step. They lose focus for just a moment. And you wear people down in that fourth quarter. And you can sense it on the Michigan sideline. When they go back up two scores, when you know there's a sigh of relief, and it takes so much pressure off of the defense. Jim Harbaugh knows it as he goes over and gives some congratulatory taps on the head to all of the offensive players who made it a two-score game again, but now up 10 with a defense that has not surrendered you know a point so far in the fourth quarter this year. Michigan has been a team, especially last year, that could knock you out in the early rounds. This team is going to take you the distance. They're going to go the distance. They don't have that kind of, I love Teddy Atlas, they don't have the hydrogen in the punch, right? They don't have the explosiveness offensively, but, man, they've got a lot of wherewithal. And they play elite defense. You're going to have to beat them in the late rounds. And no one yet really in that fourth quarter that Michigan State has. Morgan Ellison for four yards on first down. It has to wear a team out, though, at times to play constant fourth quarter NFL possession by possession games. And right now, I think that's probably the biggest worry for a Michigan fan. Is our offense at any point this season going to become good enough where all of the pressure in the fourth quarter of big games is not going to continue to be on our defense. Swing pass. One-handed catch. How about that from Jay Sean Harris? Still didn't go anywhere. He lost four yards as Lavert Hill. He didn't fall for what was a highlight real catch. Still made a tackle for a four-yard loss. Wow. You know those gloves these kids are wearing these days, Bob? <laughs> They're just a little different than they used to be. Big time catch, big time tackle in space from Hill as well. Third down and 10, though, for Indiana. Now down by two scores, so here is a big play. And this guy is just a nuisance for you to deal with offensively. Good luck trying to figure out where he's going to come, what he's going to do. From any of that group up front, who will rush, who will drop? Play clock down to one. Ramsey across his body. Sound tackle made on the tight end, Ian Thomas, by Josh Metellus. Fourth down and four. 8.55 to go. Still a lot of time. You can't go for this here at your own 31-yard line. You have to punt, and here comes the punt group for IU. Michigan's defense has forced five consecutive three and outs as Hayden Whitehead sends it to Donovan Peoples Jones and he makes the fair catch at the Wolverines 26 yard line Allison and Bob it doesn't seem to bother the Michigan defense that they're often playing under pressure in the fourth quarter they've yet to give up a fourth quarter point and Don Brown was pretty clear with his guys that you didn't come here and sign some sort of contract that said you'd only play so many plays or the offense was going to guarantee you so many points you came here to play defense for Michigan and that's exactly what you're going to do and you never see any sulking or any frustration when time and time again they are called on when you get off the field they've only played 53 snaps of defense so you find a way to get three and out, three and out, three and out, five times in a row. You're not playing a ton of snaps either. And you can do like Gary did. You can dance to that music in between timeouts. Teron Higdon, gain of a couple. Ty Isaac. A gain of about three for the USC transfer. Gained 263 yards and scored a couple of touchdowns as a freshman at USC. But transferred to Michigan, sat out the 2014 season. His mom needed surgery to correct a hearing issue and couldn't fly to the West Coast to watch him play. So he came back closer to home. He's from Shorewood, Illinois. And now he is in the huddle for a big third down here. Third and seven. And Indiana get a stop and get the ball back. Have to find the takeaway. Showing blitz. Here they come. Donovan Peoples Jones bottled up. That's a good tackle by Rashard Fenn. And that forces a three and out. It'll be Michigan to punt. 
And you know what, Jim Harbaugh in Indiana, I think he's going to take a timeout here. And Indiana and Jim Harbaugh was not going to give Indiana a chance for a takeaway. He's not going to do it. Then that way, on a number of these third downs, you manage that game. This feels like a professional game in that kind of fashion. Don't care that you have 58 passing yards if you're Jim Harbaugh. Now, I know that that timeout saves about 35 seconds because the play clock would wind all the way down before Michigan would punt. Do you like calling your second time out there with close to seven minutes to go in the game? Now you're down by two scores, leaving yourself only one time out. Were those 30 to 35 seconds in that spot worth timeout number two? I'm never comfortable doing that. And, and I think the more football that I watch, and it, and it surprises me greatly at the NFL level. The Seahawks and Rams last week, McVay, Sean McVay, first time head coach, burns two fourth quarter timeouts in a one possession game, comes back and just bites you. And as fast as you play offense with your tempo, if you're Indiana, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm, I make that move right now. And in the NFL, you have the two-minute warning. That's so right. you know you've got a free timeout waiting for you with two minutes to go one way or the other. Obviously, in college, you don't even have that. So now Indiana down to one timeout with 6.47 to go. Maybe a moot point. They're down by two scores, so they have to get at least one on the board for that to matter. And a short kick. Jason Harris with a fair catch at the 32-yard line. Only a 37-yard punt. Cassidy, thanks very much. A couple of eye-opening scores there as Ramsey drops to throw on first down. Checks it down underneath. A gain of nine to start. Watt Fillier, the true freshman, makes the catch. And now with only one timeout left for Indiana. Six and a half minutes to go, down by two scores. Really no margin for error for the Hoosiers. Taking a shot down the sideline. That might be intercepted. Levert Hill picks it off. He jumped right in front of Taysir Mack, the redshirt freshman. Walled him off, got the pick, and Michigan's got it back with 6.09 to go. I know your sentiment earlier, Bob, and I, I totally understand and get it. But maybe it's going to wear them down and have to be so precise, like a starting pitcher that's looking at 0, 0, 0, and the pressure to be perfect. I don't think these guys defensively feel it at all. You heard from Allison. You know, we talked to the defensive coordinator earlier. I think they relish these opportunities. That is a no doubter. You can't do it any better than that. Michael Zordich, secondary coach. Don Brown, it's what he lives in, that man-to-man -man coverage, and Levert Hill plays it perfect. Absolutely textbook to go up and get it. Big brother Delano plays for the Seahawks now. Had to be enjoying that as Levert Hill gets his second interception of the season. And now Michigan can work on the clock. Karan Higdon stumbles. And it looks like he will be marked down for a loss of a couple. False start. False start. Offense number 17. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. And that will take Tyrone Wheatley right off the field after he costs his team five. It was a penalty. Fawcett in that first half as you can see 11 just the third there but they've been costly a little delay a game before a shovel pass it was going to be a chunk explosive play and now you put yourself behind the sticks and if you're John O'Corn you cannot put the ball at risk there is a clock benefit though for Michigan as that takes the play clock back up to 25 seconds they can milk the clock 25 more seconds after the penalty and again a big hole for Karan Higdon as he is up to the 34-yard line, maybe the 35. Chase Dutra made the stop, so it will be third down and close to 10. That's 168 yards for that little guy. 5'10", 190, and he does not mess around. Maybe smaller in stature than Ty Isaac, but he runs downhill. A couple of first downs, and Michigan could end the game, but will they get in any way frisky with their play calling here on third down and 10? They will not. Keep it conservative and trust your defense. A loss on the play for Chris Evans. Nate Hoff came through and made the stop, and now the last timeout will be called by Indiana to try and conserve time with 4.18 to go. You know, I snuck a little workout in yesterday when you got your nap, Bob, and I, that guy walked by me in the weight room. There's just some human beings that are built to lift weights. I'm not one of them, he is. 700 pound squat, 500 pound bench press, 400 pound power clean. Like he walked by, even like the pace that he walked by, he just looked at the weights and you could tell. They get mad at him. They're like, no man, not you again. 
Like there's very few in a weight room that just own it. And uh, he is a mountain of a man. He's been in the backfield on more than one occasion today. Yeah, I remember when you went for that workout, when you thought I was going back for a nap, but I was continuing to prepare for this broadcast while you were in the weight room riding the life cycle, <laughs> enjoying whatever was on television in front of you. Hope you had a pleasant workout. <laughs> Jason Harris back, hoping to get a return off the Robins punt. And it feels for Indiana like they need something special to now happen, either on special teams or maybe a break if they're going to have a chance. Wobbly kick. Returnable. Can Harris get a block? Can he get to the edge? He's got speed down the sideline. Inside the 20-yard line for the young man who already this season had returned two punts for touchdowns, and that play might turn it around for Indiana as they now have the ball in the red zone. What an absolutely incredible story. Torn ACLs in both those knees the last two years. And there's some guys that come back stronger and come back a little bit faster, but in order to do it, you've got to attack that rehab and go gangbusters exactly what he has done, and that was a must. There's no way the offense was going to find that kind of explosive play. It really hasn't for the entirety of this game, save for a couple runs to begin the second half. Put yourself in the red zone and score fast. No timeouts for Indiana, but 4.06 on the clock. And they will start right at the Michigan 20-yard line. Four-man rush. Ramsey, incomplete through the side of the end zone. Intended for Wapfilia. You guys, Ramsey took over at quarterback for the senior Richard Lego, but Lego remains one of his biggest supporters. Before he took the field, he told the youngster, stay calm, trust yourself, trust your offense, and don't let this moment be bigger than it is. Well, he has a chance to make this one big moment. If he can make it a one-possession game, and who knows what might happen. Michigan sends a blitz. Ramsey out of the pocket. Flips one across his body. Incomplete. Simi Cobbs, the intended receiver. Now it's third down and 10. Everything is contested. The Seahawks love to say every blade of grass. And that's what this Michigan crew does defensively. Where do you go for answers here on third down and 10? Five-man rush again. Right at the first down marker. The catch is made by Luke Timian. And he's got the first down. It's first and goal. Well, he's been the one guy. And he's broken a few tackles, and he just runs away on that little slant route all the way across the field. Come trustworthy for the youngster Rams. He has Timian. Lob into the end zone. And through the side of the end zone. Again, intended for Simi Cobbs, but... No one could catch that one. David Long tied up Cobbs. After one play ago, Indiana came up with only their second third down conversion of the second half. That's where you got to be patient as well. You just cannot force the issue. You've got three in your back pocket to make it a one score game. Do not be greedy at this position. Ramsey. Fires it to the sideline. He was out of the pocket. Was there a receiver in the area? They will say that there was. Peyton Ramsey, pressured by Rashawn Gary. Obviously did not get that ball back past the line of scrimmage, and now Gary goes down. Yeah, Mac Brown said this last night in the game as well. I agree with him. Why, why are you booing? You think Rashawn Gary is going down to stop the clock? It's been some long possession. The clock was give already a, stopped. Give me a break. It was an incomplete pass. Third down and goal. He's going to win there one-on-one. -on -one. Ramsey steps up, flips it left. It's caught. Diving for the pylon. What failure. He's in for the Indiana touchdown. A redshirt freshman finds a true freshman, and it's not over yet. 3.27 to go. As 
Fillier dove for the goal line. Kennel hit the ball, and the ball was wobbling just a bit. Play is under further review. Now, the moment that the nose of that football touches the goal line, the play is dead. It's a touchdown. Unless the ruling would be, as they take a look on review, can you make an argument that before he gets to the goal line, this ball is coming loose? I think he's past the goal line before it gets touched by Kennel and before he starts to lose possession. Yeah, it's just going to be very difficult to evaluate that. Let's take a closer look through the progressive pylon cam. Let's take a look and see as Kittle touches the football. Now, because they ruled it a touchdown on the field, they would need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. The ruling on the field was that he broke the plane before the ball started to come loose. Yeah, I think it, I think it looked that way. That would be awfully difficult to try to turn around and call there. He loved the effort. In fact, it was Earl Thomas, as I referenced the Seahawks now, three times in this final drive that did the same thing a week ago right at the goal line. You know, to never give up on that play, Kinnell was picked as a little rub route. That's what created the one-on-one -on -one and gave the youngster Fillier the separation there to go and finish. There's not enough there in my mind to overturn. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So now Indiana, point after away from making it a three-point game, but they are out of timeouts. They spent them both on defense on the last two Michigan possessions. So I would think Brock with no timeouts left, and 327 to go. You're in a position where you have to onside kick. Griffin Oaks makes it. A three point game as we check in with Cassidy. Before the snap to you, Bob, who is going to win their one-on-one? -on -one? And there's times as a coach that you could help with that. You can create that kind of separation as you're seeing Gary still alien on the sidelines. And that's exactly what Mike DeBoer did for his redshirt freshman quarterback. You're going to see Timian, and we've seen him active now. Michigan is going to pressure here. But watch Timian on his little rub route here create the separation for failure. See the pressure in that little bump right there. And there are times in the NFL that that little contact right there can be called. They have their eye on it, a very keen eye in the NFL to create that separation. There is no call in that moment on the third down. That's exactly what created the separation. The pressure comes, you get your rub route. And it's not a pick play if it's not called, it's a rub route. And that's what got the separation for the touchdown. And now with no timeouts left, Indiana is in a position where they have to try an onside kick, and they are lined up to do just that. Michigan with the hands team out to defend against it. And now Michigan will call a timeout on defense. The only thing I would debate on this, Bob, this isn't definitive to me. And, and I'll tell you why, because the only time that you have gained significant real estate was your punt return here in the second half, other than your run to begin it. And Michigan will still have to gain a first down with that clock with 327. They would have to gain a first down to end the game. Correct. But three 40-second play clocks is two full minutes. But you don't three get... plays is going to take about five to six seconds per play. Indiana, even if they got the three and out, would probably not get the ball back until there was about a minute, minute and yeah. ten to go in the minute, game. Minute, minute, ten but at least you would then put your punt returner on the field and give your most explosive player an option who just did something for you there versus you know, a Michigan punt that's going to pin you back with no timeouts and seemingly drain, you know, have to drive 70, 80, 90 yards. Well, maybe they're bluffing. Maybe they will kick it deep out of this formation, but no, there is the onside kick. And it is touched along the sideline. Did Simi Cobb stay in bounds? I think he did. It's Indiana football. Wow. 
was his left foot still oh. on the ground oh. when he gained possession of the ball. The right foot steps out. Does he have it with a foot down in bounds? Wow. And the officials in another conference right in front of the Michigan bench. It looked to me like the initial call was Indiana football. The rolling on the field is the kick was touched in bounds by the receiving team and then went out of bounds. It's Michigan's ball, first and ten. That play is under review. So they're saying Simi Cobbs did not have possession of the football before he stepped on the sideline. Now these frames that you are looking at, just as they are in the replay booth, are synced up perfectly. Does he have possession of the football with a foot still down? <laughs> That is as close as you can get. <laughs> that is. I mentioned a blade of grass earlier. <laughs> is there a blade of grass? That foot is clearly out. It is all about that left foot in that moment. And does he have possession of the ball? If he's still bobbling the football in any way, shape, or form, and take a look, is he still bobbling the football, trying to get control of it before he steps on the sideline? This almost requires freeze framing it. I mean, it's almost that close, and that's certainly what the folks in the replay booth are doing. They'll look at it at full speed, but yes. they will also look at it with those two images synced up perfectly, as slow as is necessary to try and make a game-changing call. Perfectly executed kick. Everything you could possibly ever want in that kick. He's got two hands on it there with a foot down in bounds. And does he control it? And the ball starts to come loose just a bit as he steps out of bounds. Remember, the call on the field is that he was out of bounds. The call on the field is that the ball belongs to Michigan. So it has to be indisputable yep. to overturn it. Now, if they had ruled him in bounds yep. and had given Indiana the ball, not sure you would have seen enough to give it back to Michigan. And if you are an Indiana fan right now, 1987. 36 of 37 that you have lost in this matchup. You have seen how many calls today? Interception off the board. The opposite sideline, Tom Allen loses his mind. All right, Sidney Cobbs is just barely out of bounds on a 50-yard play that got called back and, and rightfully called in that moment. the decision after review the Indiana player did not complete the catch in bounds it will be Michigan's ball first down at the 48 yard line and Brock it was that little bobble of the football where Simi Cobbs is trying to get firm control before yep. that right foot comes down out of bounds. Right there, the ball's coming loose, and that's, and that's enough and that's, to say he's out. Yeah, and that's what that call is telling you. It's not that left foot. Don't mean tweet me and Bob, all right? <laughs> it's not that left foot. It is that bobble. It is that movement right there. That's the difference for Simi Cobbs, who's sitting up there looking at that screen and going, man, alive. Get pushed out of bounds earlier on a huge play. I just can't quite get back in bounds. And then in that moment, in that instance right there, I just can't quite control the ball enough to get back to my team at the 48. So now if you're Indiana, you have to get a three and out. No timeouts left. It's a two-yard run for Karan Higdon. Now with 3.20 still to go in the game. This game is not over yet, but Michigan will take every second off the clock that they possibly can. Indiana needs what they've been very proficient at this season, and that is forcing three and outs. One first down here for Michigan would just about end the game. And this ball cannot and will not go in the air. Again, again. A gain of two more. And this will take us inside of two minutes to go before Michigan has to snap it on third down. This is where you would have sure loved. Maybe not the, the two tight end timeouts that you took for game management, but the one that you busted for not having the right people on the field. That's the one that comes back and bites you more than ever. This is the game. 
If Indiana gets a stop on third and six, they would still have a pulse, as Michigan would be forced to punt. If Michigan gets the first down, they could take a knee. They snap it right as the play clock goes to zeros. They give it to Higdon. He comes up three yards short. So, Brock, the exact scenario we talked about, if you were to kick it deep, at least in terms of the clock, not field position, about to play itself out. Michigan will take the clock, I would think, for Jim Harbaugh, all the way down as far as he can, call a timeout, and they'll be punting with about a minute and 10 to go. So you're going to get the ball back if you're Indiana with one minute remaining. But this could have been punted at the 20. And you could have had your most dynamic player out there, your biggest difference maker, who set up your last touchdown with his return on the field. I can't imagine this ball will be punted anywhere near the returner. There is no way that Jason Harris can touch this ball returning it. And there's the timeout called time by out. Jim Harbaugh with 1-11 to go. This is their second of the half. So Brad Robbins set to punt, and Indiana does not even have a man back deep. It looks like they are going to sell out to try and block the punt with 1.11 to go. And now they will drop Jayshon Harris back deep at the last moment. And this will head to the end zone with a flag down at midfield. Holding against Michigan. Tom Allen wants the officials to come over and give him his options. Here's the call. Holding. Kicking team number 33. The 10-yard penalty will be added to the touchback spot. It will be Indiana's ball. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. Well, that buys Indiana 10 more yards. Yeah, and it's the snapper. It's Cameron Cheeseman, and he is not going to allow anybody to come through him if it's even close. He's going to try the two-point takedown. Now, there might be an Indiana fan saying, why not take the 10 yards and give Jay Sean Harris a chance at a return again? Well. That takes some time off the clock for your offense, and you'd be banking on Brad Robbins not being able to reach the end zone. No. He probably would be able to reach the end zone from about the 40 to 45 yard line of Michigan. So here we go. 105 to go for Indiana. They have no timeouts, and they have to try and get Griffin Oaks into field goal range. His career long 58 back when he was a redshirt freshman. First catch is made short of the line to gain by Simi Cobb. So that'll keep the clock rolling. Second down and one. Peyton Ramsey. Hey, drops it into Luke Timian. All the way down to the Michigan 36 yard line. They're just about in field goal range potentially now. From here, it would be about a 55-yarder. And they've got plenty of time to get closer. 42 seconds on the clock. And those two throws looking like the guy he's named after. Flags down. If this is a false start, it's going to knock time off the clock as well. Did Indiana react to Michigan jumping in the neutral zone, or was Michigan drawn off? False start. Offense number 62, five-yard penalty, remains first down. By rule, this foul includes a 10-second runoff. Please reset the game clock to 28 seconds. 28 seconds. That's a junior right tackle, Brandon Knight, and that is just a killer here right in front. You're trying to get into your set and pass protect you just early. You can see the whole line looking at each other. That's snap count. A miss. The wrong time. So the 10 second runoff of the clock starts running. 25 seconds to go. Peyton Ramsey throws it to nowhere. They'll say the receiver in the area was Taysier Mack as Devin Bush just about brought down Ramsey. Second down and 15, but Brock, 22 seconds to go. 
And this is huge. The first two snaps were zone coverage, a zone ball thrown right off the ear of Devin Bush. That was pressure. That was man game on the line. I think you're going to get back to a little bit more of that man coverage. Do what you do best when the moment's the brightest. Now that field goal target line is where the IU co coaches told us they're comfortable with Oaks getting to. Peyton Ramsey over the middle. That's a first down catch potentially. Sonny Cobbs, maybe a yard shot. Now you have to go up and spike it. Right at the field goal target line. And throwing it away with two seconds to go wow. is Ramsey. And here we go. How about the guts of Peyton Ramsey? My goodness gracious, kid's been beat up all day long. And now you put the guy that's been perfect on the season on the field. Had one blocked earlier today, but has made all his other attempts. Two years ago, he was the Big Ten kicker of the year. This to force overtime from 46. Icing the kicker is Jim Harbaugh. So often, these games come down to special teams plays, and here was a key one, a block of a field goal by Maurice Hurst. And I can promise you he and Devin Bush and Gary and those guys are going to be so active in the middle of that line, you're going to have to deal with their penetration. I, that is an astounding drive against Michigan's group defensively. I mean, that is that is special stuff out of a redshirt freshman, and Jim Harbaugh knows it. You know, you're trying an onside kick at the start of all of this because you're not sure if your offense is capable of doing what they just did. If you thought your offense could do this, you probably would have kicked deep and see if your defense could go get a stop, which they did. So after the timeout, here we go. From 46 yards out to tie it, Griffin Oates, the fifth-year senior. it away clean he's got it inside the right upright Michigan had not given up a fourth quarter point before today. They just gave up 10 in the last three and a half minutes. And we're headed to overtime. Overtime in Bloomington. Overtime in Bloomington. Here's the toss. Okay, gentlemen, extra periods. Each team will possess the ball at the 25-yard line. Each team will have one timeout per period. They do not carry over. Michigan, same coin as before. You want heads or tails? Heads. He called heads. We're going to let it hit the ground. The call is heads. It is a tail. We want to be on defense. Indiana won the toss. They chose to start on defense. Michigan, you get to choose the end. Indiana chose to start on defense. It will be Michigan's ball first and 10 at the 25-yard line at this end of the field. So Brock, all of the difficulty that Michigan has had this season offensively now is right in the spotlight. They have been terrible scoring touchdowns in the red zone when the field compacts. They have struggled mightily. And you know Jim Harbaugh wants a touchdown to start off overtime. He does not want this to linger, or he would love to send his defense out there in a compacted field, knowing if they get a stop, it's over. Got the touchdown earlier, but 5 of 15, 33%. That is it when it came to scoring touchdowns in this red zone coming into today. And there's been no balance. Look at this stat sheet right now. 58 yards passing on the day. 10 to 20 for John O'Corn. Really protected him through much of this game. There's no protection now. You got to go win it. 
Karan Higdon working on a 175 yard two touchdown day. Here's the eye back. And they'll start on the ground. He runs into his own man, bounces it outside. Look at Higdon. What a day. Touchdown to start overtime. You need your biggest and your best players to rise to the occasion when the moment calls for it. That's Karan Higdon making three, four guys miss, freezing in the backfield. The penetration stops his feet. He never stops believing that he can get it in. And what an enormous, explosive play for the Wolverines. Karan Higdon, for his career coming into today, had 645 yards and eight touchdowns. In this game alone, he is at an even 200 yards rushing, and that is his third score. You know what happens on those punt returns and kickoff returns? You see this every once in a while, Bob, right? You see a bobble. Those guys bobble it. In essence, that's what happens here. This play gets blown up so badly. Look at the eyes of all these defenders. You'll see it on returns all the time, right? They just freeze. They just freeze. They're not in their normal lanes. And there's that hesitation, that moment where the running back believes he can bounce, he can get outside, and the rest of those guys just frozen, frozen in a moment of time. And that says it all. That play was blown up in the backfield. That is the right call. Tom Allen is saying, I dialed up the exact call I wanted. I hit that thing in the mouth. And it was re-executed on the line. front by the guys that yep. he dialed it up to execute it. So now it goes back to an IU offense that scored 10 points late to force overtime. Peyton Ramsey, back shoulder, incomplete, intended for Cindy Cobbs. Flag out. David Long. Tied up Cobbs. And this will go against Michigan. This will be their 16th penalty. Pass interference. Defense number 22. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, you know what you're getting now. I mean, the final three minutes, uh, the punt return and final drives and zone coverage, you are going to get nothing but this, man. You're going to get nothing but press coverage. One-on-one, -on -one, those mono -e mono battles on the perimeter and on the inside as well. Ramsey out of the pocket. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. Down to about the 3-yard line. Indiana can get a first down inside the two. How much confidence. We've watched it just blossom in this game. Unbelievably patient, enduring as he took hits after hits. Five consecutive three and outs. But no panic from these Hoosiers when the game mattered the most, and especially at their quarterback. Now David Long is down on one knee for Michigan. Again, the coach Tom Allen told us when he was only the defensive coordinator last year, he would watch Ramsey run the scout team. So I told our guys at the time, he'll either be the starting quarterback or play a role in helping us win. You can see it. Well, now he's got a chance to beat Michigan in overtime. They'll hand it off, and it looks like that might be good enough for a first down. As Morgan Ellison moved the pile, let's see where they spot the football. First and goal inside the two. Come right back to the same play. And they will. And Michigan is ready for it. Ellison with nowhere to go. Now it's second down and goal just outside the two. Rashawn Gary made the stop. I'll tell you what, the QB had an opportunity right there to pull it if he wanted to. Full out commitment by Michigan to stop that run. Won't be surprised they come back to that. Plenty of time on the play clock. A rollout for Ramsey. At the pylon wide of Jay Sean Harris. Third down and goal. They got what they wanted. That was a, that was a well designed play. That was a motion. Back across the formation, expecting man coverage in that bunch. You were you were getting what you were wanting. Michigan played better team defense, though, than the execution of that play.
Jim Harbaugh wants a timeout before third down. So the timeout that Michigan has to use in overtime, Jim Harbaugh will spend it here. After the Michigan timeout, third down and goal, obviously in four down territory, down by seven in overtime. There's the zone read. Right up the middle goes Peyton Ramsey for nothing. So now it comes down to this, fourth down and goal from outside the three. have another injury for Michigan. This time it's Noah Furbush. Here's the game. Fourth down and goal in overtime. And now a timeout will be called by Indiana. Before the fourth down play here in overtime. Bob Oshusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams. And it comes down to this in Bloomington after the Indiana timeout. Now neither team has timeouts left. So it will be decided by the players. Fourth down and goal at the four to force a second overtime. A rollout for Ramsey. Has to get it in the end zone. It's a jump ball. And it's intercepted by Tyree Cannell. And that'll do it. Michigan survives in overtime. What an effort by Indiana. But Michigan finds a way to win.